The U.S. military has confirmed the authenticity of newly released video showing U.S. forces indiscriminately firing on Iraqi civilians. That's a weapon. impact was extraordinary because if you watch it through come on fire there's nowhere to go after it you can't be rationalized it can't be excused oh yeah look at those dead bastards nice Collateral murder shifted the perspective almost immediately. It's one eight. Uh, we also have one individual uh, appears to be wounded, crawl, trying to crawl away. Roger, we got Come on, buddy. I got to pick up a weapon. Reuters driver Saeed Jmah survived the initial attack. Here, he's seen trying to crawl away as the helicopter flies overhead. A voice from the cockpit hopes that Saeed brandishes a weapon to justify more shooting. Picking up the wounded. Yeah, we're trying to get permission to engage. Come on, let us shoot. It's Bushman 7, go ahead. Roger, we have a black SUV or a bongo truck picking up the body. Request permission to engage. Bushmaster 7, Roger. This is Bushmaster 7, Roger, engage. Clear. Come on. Clear. Clear. Warren, engage. Oh, yeah, look at that, right through the windshield. <laughs> Salah Mutasser is the man who was driving that van. He was taking his two children, age 9 and 6, at the time to school. There is uh, no mention of any civilians. Uh, everybody is, uh, is categorized as uh, enemy combatant. It is to, uh, to lower the numbers of, of what they call collateral damage, which is a, rather a, a, an awkward term for, for killed civilians. We have clear evidence for war crimes having been committed. We have clear evidence for torture having been committed on a large scale. We have clear evidence for corruption. We have clear evidence for a host of human rights violations. And there have been no prosecutions, no investigations by any of those states that scream so loudly about the rule of law in this case. The importance of releasing this video uh, in general is that, that it, it encaptured so many elements of the Iraq war. And in effect, I think that Collateral murder has become iconic and it's a symbol. This video, alongside maybe the, the uh, images from Abu Ghraib, are in a sense what the, the Napalm Girl photo uh, tells us about the Vietnam War. So it in, uh, captures so many elements of uh, the callousness, the, uh, the bloodlust and the, the horror of the Iraq War. Oh, it's their fault for bringing their kids to a battle. That's right. One of the uh, reasons why this is important uh, now is the fact that uh, the exposure of, of the, uh, these uh, rules are, are an element in the indictment against Julian Assange. This sets a dangerous precedent for all media organizations and journalists in Europe and elsewhere around the world. This precedent means that any journalist can be extradited for prosecution in the United States for having published truthful information about the United States. Just to put down on record, in 2013, uh, in the trial of Chelsea Manning, uh, who was subsequently sentenced uh, to 35 years, for uh, giving information to the media, and, and only for giving information to the media, there was no other allegation against them, um, that the General Carr, the person responsible for investigating whether any uh, harm was caused by our publication, the US government said under oath that they couldn't find a single person who had been harmed.
not a single person. One of the hopeful things that I have discovered is that nearly every war that has started in the past 50 years has been a result of media lies. The media could have stopped it if they had searched deep enough, if they hadn't um, reprinted government propaganda, they could have stopped it. But what does that mean? Well, that means basically populations don't like wars. And populations have to be fooled into wars. Populations don't willingly and op with open eyes go into a war. So if we have a good media environment, then we'll also have a peaceful environment. Democracies, or the pseudo-democracies that we are evolving into, wars are a result of lies. The Vietnam War and the push for US involvement was a result of the Gulf of Tonkin incident. A lie. Here, here. The Iraq War famously is a result of lies. Wars in Somalia are a result of lies. The Second World War and the German invasion of Poland was a result of carefully constructed lies. That is war by media. Let us ask ourselves of the complicit media, which is the majority of the mainstream press, what is the average death count attributed to each journalist? When we understand that wars come about as a result of lies peddled to the British public and the American public and the publics all over Europe and other countries, then who are the war criminals? It is not just leaders, it is not just soldiers, it is journalists. Journalists are war criminals. And why one might think that that should lead us to a state of despair, that the reality that is constructed around us is constructed by liars, is constructed by people who are close to those that they are meant to be policing. It should lead us also to an optimistic understanding, because if wars can be started by lies, truth can be started, peace can be started by truth. <laughs>